In this video, we're going to go over various functional groups, and then we're going to determine if those functional groups are acidic, and we'll, know, um, we'll keep that in red, basic, and we'll color code those in blue, or neutral, which will be black. So before watching this video, make sure you are able to recognize all functional groups. So there are plenty of videos that you can watch on YouTube. I will put a link of a video in below this video. So make sure before finishing this video that you already know all your functional groups, what they look like, how to draw them, and how to recognize them. Because in this video, we're going to talk about whether a functional group is acidic, basic, or neutral. So we're going to start off with the acidic functional groups. So one acidic functional group is a carboxylic acid. So this is an acidic functional group because if you remove this proton right here, then what you'll get is the IB form, the ionized base form, where you started with the unionized acid and you moved on to the ionized base. So this ionized base form is stable because if you remember back to OCHEM, you have potential resonance structures where this lone pair can resonate right here and then this pi bond can go up to the oxygen resulting in this other structure where now the electron density is on this oxygen versus the original oxygen that it was on. And of course, originally we had two lone pairs here. That goes back to OCHEM. So what I'm showing here is that this proton is considered acidic. And the reason why it's considered acidic is because it, when the proton is removed, you create this stable conjugate base. So remember, the more stable the conjugate base, the stronger the starting acid. So the more stable the conjugate base, the stronger the starting acid. So in other words, when I remove this proton right here, I get a stable structure. I'm going to write stable twice to really emphasize that. And because that structure is stable, that means that it's okay for that proton to be removed. When that proton is removed, you're creating a stable structure. How is that proton removed? Well, of course, it will be removed with a base or in a basic environment. But when it is removed, we get this structure over here, which is nice and stable. Why is it stable? Because it has resonance structures, where that electron density is distributed between two oxygens rather than one. So because we have a stable conjugate base, that means that my original acid is acidic. It's, a, it's happy to donate that proton. Once it donates the proton, it's nice and stable. There's no reason for it not to be acidic. Okay, So that was kind of a very long explanation for why carboxylic acids are acidic. Our next functional group that we're going to go over is a phenyl. So a phenyl is also considered to be acidic and the reason why a phenyl is acidic is uh, a similar reason. So this is my unionized acid form. If I deprotonate that acidic proton what I would get is this O minus. And so that O minus is of course ionized because there's a negative charge and it's the basic form because we remove the proton uh, from that starting acid. So now I have my IB form. Now why is this stable? Remember we want this to be stable because in order for an acid to be an acid, uh, the resulting conjugate base, once the proton is removed, must be stable. 
right? Which is kind of logical because if you think about it, if when the proton is removed, the resulting conjugate base is unstable, then that would mean that the starting structure does not want to donate that proton. Conversely, if the starting proton is acidic, then that means that once you donate it, the resulting structure will be stable and in other words, happy without that proton and that's why that proton is readily donated. Okay, And so that, long story short, this phenyl is also an acidic functional group. Another acidic functional group that you may or may not be familiar with is called a sulfonamide. Now this sulfonamide has a sulfur in it with two carbonyl groups. These are electron withdrawing groups and then it has an amine right next to it. So looking at this most people would think oh there's a nitrogen that must be basic but no this nitrogen is actually next to two strong electron withdrawing groups. These oxygens are electronegative and so they want to pull all the electron density towards them. So most of the electron density isn't actually on this nitrogen anymore. It's being pulled by these strong electron withdrawing groups. So as a result, we consider these two protons right here to be acidic protons. Okay. So these protons are acidic. And again, this is the unionized acid form. You can draw the ionized base form on your own. And so this structure is called a sulfonamide. If you see an amine group right next to a sulfur with two carbonyls on it, then we call that a sulfonamide. So remember this whole structure, like this sulfur has to be directly attached to this nitrogen. What are you looking for on the nitrogen? Well, anything really, it's like an amine. So two hydrogens or two carbon groups, it doesn't really matter. But you do need a hydrogen present in order for it to be considered an acid because otherwise there'd be no proton to donate. donate. And then you need two carbonyls. So sulfonamides are acidic. Another acidic functional group, and this is where the naming kind of gets tricky, is an imide. Okay, so an imide looks interesting. I like to think of it as a nitrogen that is sandwiched between two carbonyls or two ketone groups. So it's like on the right hand side we have a carbonyl, on the left hand side we have a carbonyl, in the middle, sandwiched in the middle, we have a nitrogen. So again, you're looking at this nitrogen and you're thinking, well, why is this acidic? The reason it's acidic is the same reason that a sulfonamide is acidic. We have an electron withdrawing group here, an electron withdrawing group here. These electron withdrawing groups are removing or pulling the electron density away from this nitrogen. Um, and then as a result, this hydrogen is acidic. Now, if you really want to know why, if I draw the IB form, well, what you'll see is that the nitrogen what you'll see is that the nitrogen has this lone pair on it and that lone pair is going to be um, sorry not yeah that lone pair is going to have resonance structures and so in other words the negative charge will not be concentrated on the nitrogen some of that negative charge will resonate onto this oxygen and some of the negative charge will resonate onto this oxygen and so it's a really stable structure and what we already said is that if your conjugate base is stable, that means that your starting acid is acidic, right? The stronger the conjugate base, or sorry, the more stable the conjugate base, 
the stronger your starting acid. So when this proton is removed, the resulting structure is stable and happy because of the potential resonance structures and the fact that that nitrogen is not con the negative charge is not concentrated on the nitrogen. So we went over all the acidic functional groups in this video. In the next video, we'll go over basic functional groups. So here we have a carboxylic acid, which is acidic, pKa of 1 to 5, phenyl, pKa 8 to 10, acidic, sulfonamide, acidic, pKa is not one that needs to be memorized, and imide is also acidic. So these four functional groups you need to recognize as acidic and make sure you can draw the UA form converting into the IB form.